Greetings, students. Without wasting any time, let's consider how we would mathematically calculate CFEs, continued fractional expansions, given an arbitrary fraction. In other words, we are in fact going from this notation to this notation. This turns out to be a rather basic process for any rational number, but it relates to Euclid's algorithm, which finds the greatest common factor between two natural numbers. Uh, a common analogy given by one of my sources is that, is that of a rectangle having dimensions equal to the two starting numbers, the numerator and denominator, of a given rational number. So in other words, we can start with p over q being represented by some sort of rectangle, dimensions equal to p and q. From here, we can consider the number of times the smaller number divides into the larger number. This can be represented by fitting squares of side length equal to the smaller value into the larger rectangle. So in other words, in this case, we can have uh, a finite number of squares of side length q in this case, assuming q is less than p, and we can divide the rectangle into different sort of sections, one of which, well in this case it's, it's one, it could be actually an, an arbitrary number, is a square of side length q. So in other words we have one square fitting into it, and then in addition to that we have a certain number, we have a certain, we have a certain quantity representing the remaining area. And what we can do from there is basically continue this process, where we're, we're basically taking what's left, and we're actually fitting a certain number of squares into that, into this rectangle, this rectangle on the right. But for these squares that we're fitting, they will have side length equal to this quantity, because it's the, basically, again, it is the the smaller quantity as compared to q here. So we would continue dividing it up into squares and keep going in that process until we ended up with filling it with complete squares, which we can do. And this, again, I'm just presenting this because it was introduced to me as an analogy for continued fractions and converting an arbitrary ratio of integers to a continued fraction. And we can take an example where basically let's say 43 over 17. So how we would go about this is basically by saying well it's sort of, uh, as I mentioned, it's a relatively basic task but basically what we can say is 43 divided by 17 can be written as it's actually equal to 2 with a remainder of 9. Or in other words, what we really mean by that is that it is 2 plus 9 over 17. So these quantities are equal, so this is just sort of rewriting it in a different form. It's, it's going to be 2 plus 9 17. And this is because 2 times 17 is equal to 34, and then 34 plus another 9 is equal to 43. Thus, we can say, from here, we can actually say that this is equal to 2 plus, and we can actually rewrite 9 seventeenths by saying it is now 1 over the quantity 17 ninths. So, this is something you'll see very frequently when calculating these continued fraction expansions and, and working with these sorts of things in calculations. Uh, we can take 1 over and then take the multiplicative inverse, or the reciprocal and it's still a valid, it's a valid statement, as I'm sure you already know. Um, and this, of course, can be written as 2 plus 1 over, now we're sort of repeating the process, so we can analyze what exactly is 17 ninths. Well, it is 1 plus 8 ninths, and I'm sure from here you can see what kind of structure we're forming. We, we are, uh, you know, forming, or f sort of constructing a structure which is, 
you know, we have a0, some number here, plus 1 over, a1, plus 1 over, and that's that's what we're trying to form here, that, that, that sort of staggered fraction structure. And if we move on, we can, of course, say this is 2 plus 1 over 1 plus, well, what is 8 ninths? Again, we can take the multiplicative inverse, or in other words, the reciprocal, and go from there. So it's 1 over 9 eighths in the denominator. And then we can keep going and rewrite that as 1 over 1 plus 1 over. And here we can say it's clearly, uh, pretty clearly, 1 plus 1 eighth. It's, it's 9 eighths, in other words. That's just, you know, a way of writing that. So, going from here, we can say that the overall CFE, or continued fraction expansion, can be written as, at least in the bracket notation, we can say it is 2, semicolon, 1, comma, 1, comma, 8. And this is true. You can, you can look this up, you can use one of the online calculators of continued fractions, and it, it turns out to be true. Uh, 2, 1, 1, 8 corresponds to 43 seventeenths. So this process is a sort of unraveling, or in other words, expanding the rational number into a continued fraction. You know, the process we're repeating, I, I'd like to emphasize, the process we're repeating is all based off what the remainder is. It's, it's basically just dividing through, and it keeps on going, until basically we get a remainder of zero. Because in other words, if we tried to keep going from here, we just, well, we have, we already have 1 over 8 here. And since 1 divides evenly into pretty much any number, that, that's already in simpler form, simplest form, basically. Um, you know, in theory, we could write this as just that subsection, we could write it as 1 over 8 plus 0, but that would be a little bit redundant now. <laughs> um, it would be a little bit uh, unnecessary, uh, sort of redundant. And we can also go the other way, from the continued fraction to the ratio of integers, which should become very clear in a moment. In order to do this, say, well, let's use uh, 2, semicolon, 3, comma, 2, comma, 2. So first, we can write it out in the uh, more expanded notation, so it's clearly 2 plus 1 over, and it's 3 plus 1 over, 2 plus 1 over, 2. So in order, in order to do this, we simply condense the nested fractions by evaluating them and then taking inverses. So, so what I mean by that, it helps us see examples, of course. We can say it's 2 plus 1 over a whole quantity, that is 3 plus 1 over. And then, if you focus on this denominator, just focusing on sort of the, the most bottom level denominator, or like sort of like the, the lowest level, the most inner level of the continued fraction, we can evaluate that. That's something we can work with. 2 plus 1 half, well that's 2.5, or in other words, five halves, and we can we can evaluate that. We can also rewrite it as being four halves plus one half, or in other words, five halves. So we can rewrite it here as five halves, and then of course we see that other very key kind of operation, which is taking the one over something, which is the reciprocal. So from here we can rewrite it as two plus one over. 3 plus, and it's the reciprocal of 5 halves, or in other words, it's 2 fifths. And we can, of course, rewrite that as 1 over, well, here we have 3 plus 2 fifths. Well, what is that? Let's think about it. 3 can be written as 15 15, or 15 fifths. Really, we're just repeatedly taking the lowest common denominator, or finding the lowest common denominator of these numbers, or in other words, 39 seventeenths. A more specific thing I'd like to describe is something called Euclid's algorithm. So we can analyze, let's say, the case of uh, 43 over 17 in the context of Euclid's algorithm. 
This has been known for actually thousands of years, and it's pretty interesting. It's, it's a way of finding the greatest common factor between two integers. So the first thing we can do is we can say 43 can be written as 2 times 17 plus 9, because this is really 34 plus 9. So again, it's, it's just another notation, another way of saying this first step here. that uh, 43 over 17 is 2 remainder 9, so it's just 2 times 17 plus 9. Another, you know, very basic way of writing that. And we can move on, we can actually keep going with the number here in, in this column, as we'll see, and the number here. And we can take 17 and 9 in this case, which, by the way, you can also see the, the parallel uh, in continued fraction expansions, 9 seventeenths, is sort of our next fraction that we form when we're generating the continued fraction expansion. So with 17 and 9, that's our next step. We're actually saying that we put 17 here and 9 in this column, and we want to find 17 over 9. So we want to basically express 17 as a function of 9. So 17 we know is equal to 1 times 9 plus 8. And again, it's it's very similar, very parallel to what we are doing down here, because we end up with the 8 ninths in there, which is parallel, because the next step here in Euclid's algorithm is taking 9 and expressing it as a function of 8. And I'm sure, as it's already clear, we, we can multiply by 1 and add 1, because, as we'll see, this turns out to be the column of remainders. And that's a very important column, as we'll see. Um, but we actually get 8 and 1 here, so we can express 8 as a function of 1. And really, most simply, we can simply say this is 8 times 1 plus 0. And so this is really what we're doing in, in Euclid's algorithm. We continually divide one number into another, and then take the results of the last step and make, them, make that our new step. And, interestingly enough, this algorithm, this Euclid's algorithm, finds the greatest common factor, and the greatest common factor, no matter what these two starting numbers are, will always be equal to the last non-zero remainder in this column. So in this case, you know, zero is our final number, so that's not particularly useful to us. I mean, eventually this will always get down to zero, assuming, well, assuming we have a one here. But that's the important thing, see? The 1 is what tells us that these two numbers are co-prime. In other words, their greatest common factor is equal to 1. So this is what we're finding. And this generalizes, too. The greatest common factor of a and b equals the last non-zero element of the set of remainders generated by this Euclid's algorithm, where we keep dividing. And another key point is that this is intrinsically linked with the continued fraction expansion. In fact, if we were to take this column right here, then that is the column representing the continued fraction expansion. It is, as you'll see. Going back right here, we see it is 2118 is the continued fraction expansion. And that is exactly what we're seeing here, 2118, of course, because it's, you know, it is really the same process. But yeah, uh, I thought you'd be interested in that. If you have any questions, let me know. And other than that, I actually have an exercise for you guys to sort of ponder and get back to me. As an exercise for you viewers, uh, I'd like you to try a problem posed by one of my sources, Dr. Ron Knott, who has a PhD in pure mathematics. So this is available on his, on his website, actually. And he credits someone named Anthony Shaw for, uh, I guess, identifying these patterns and being the one who told Dr. Knott about this. But basically, we can look at a sequence, uh, and I'll actually, I'll, I'll quote from, from here on. First, let's look at the sequence of fractions formed from neighboring square numbers in this list above. Change each of these fractions into a continued fraction. And he lists them. So 25 over 16, 49 over 36. 
81 over 64, 121 over 100. Can you spot the pattern? Is what is what he asks. In other words, can you can you see the pattern in the continued fractions? Hint: Express the two numbers in the in the proper fraction using the square numbers quantity 2n squared and 2n plus 1 quantity squared. And another question he poses is, does 9 fourths fit into this pattern too? After that, he says, quote, Here's another sequence of fractions similar to the previous investigation, and again formed from successive square numbers. Convert each of these fractions to a continued fraction. So this I'll call exercise 2.1, and for the sort of the sequel, or the extension, try finding the pattern for this set of numbers. It's 36 over 25, 64 over 49, 100 over 81, 144 over 121, and so on. Dr. Knott also says, quote, What is the pattern this time? Again, express it in mathematical terms using quantity 2n squared and 2n plus 1 squared. End quote. So let me know what you come up with, and we can compare answers if you like. Other than that, feel free to do some other work on CFEs, and let me know what you find. Thank you very much for watching.